right, 914, everybody. We are continuing to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month right here on PIX11. And this morning, we're shining a spotlight on a man who has made his mark on the entertainment industry. Yeah, Jorge Gutierrez is a Mexican artist, writer, producer, and director. And today, he's taking us inside his world of animation. When I first started, I was rejected a lot. People would usually say, this subject matter, book of life, a movie about dying, this subject matter is too weird or too morose. In my head, I always thought, eventually they're gonna catch up and they're gonna realize all this stuff is incredibly universal. <laughs> my name is Jorge Gutierrez, and I'm an artist, writer, and director. Please help me reunite with the love of my life. Book of Life has a pretty long history. It took me 14 years to get that film made. It was an idea I wanted to make since film school. And then I was very lucky in that I got to pitch it to Guillermo del Toro and he became a producer. And I owe the movie to him because with his backing and his support, we got to make the film and it changed my life. To see a, a giant, you know, building-sized billboard of, of our movie in my home town was, I was just cried like a baby. It was, it was very overwhelming. I was originally born in Mexico City, and then when I was nine years old, we moved to Tijuana. I've been drawing my whole life. I really got into drawing as a little kid, and my, my parents tell these stories that I was like a party monkey, uh, where they would hold me up upside down, and they would have me draw for the whole family. <laughs> 1994, I got into CalArts, California Institute of the Arts, and I moved to LA and I've been here ever since. This is a poster from our movie, The Book of Life, and then this is a poster of Maya and the Three. As a kid uh, who really wanted to make cartoons, I couldn't look up to other Latino creators because there weren't any examples for me. So I looked at Guillermo del Toro and I said, I want to be the Guillermo del Toro of cartoons. I am obsessed with Mexican folklore and pop culture. I think the further you get away from your country, the more you romanticize it. And so for me, being able to grab from this buffet of culture and showcase it to the world has been sort of my life mission. My wife, Sandra Kiwa, uh, Emmy-winning Sandra Kiwa, is someone that I've been with since high school. We, we've always been together. We've always worked together. She designs all the female characters. She does voices. She reads all my stuff before anybody and I call her the muse. Maya and the Three is inspired by my wife Sandra when I met her. Maya is a teenage princess who's a rebel and goes on this crazy quest and I feel like that's what happened to my wife. And early on people were concerned, a female hero, Latin America, South America, will that connect to the world? Here we go. Oh, she looks like a real princess. <laughs> Maya, are you okay? Can we help you? Uh, the show came out in October of last year, and it was uh, in the top 10 in 54 countries around the world. Stories from Latin America, studies from Latino creators, they can connect. We just need those opportunities. People have pictures of their families in their homes. These are our families to us. The biggest lesson I want to pass to my son, Luca, who's uh, 13, is we come from a culture that's very strong. But do never, never, don't let the culture define you. You define the culture. Now that I've made enough stuff that I can inspire kids to go, if he could do it, maybe I can do it. Because if you don't see somebody that looks like you doing the things you want to do, it's a leap that's bigger. But if you see somebody that looks like you, that grew up like you, that literally is part of your culture, you go, well, they could do it, maybe I can do it.